Ross might be out. Taken comfortably, and that's a good catch in the deep. One run needed. This might run away to the boundary. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Straight Bat with Devesh. Today my guest is a very important person as far as Cricket Canada is concerned. Uh, he debuted for Canada in 2005 and then he coached Canada uh, for almost four years and then he disappeared from the scene. Uh, he was a former international player for Sri Lanka as well. He played uh, 11 test match and 16 ODI uh, with a very short OD, uh, international career but he definitely made a mark within in every right. So, let's welcome uh, Mr. Pobudu Desanayake uh, on my show. Hello, this, uh, Pobudu, how are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's my pleasure to have you in my program and uh, let's talk about your journey in the cricket first and then we'll go one by one because you have a very long journey. Um, and I would like to also uh, add to this point that both of us share the same date of birth, 11th mm -hmm. July. So, I am very happy to have you in my program and uh, it is not exaggeration to say that Pobudi is one of the best person when it comes to associate cricket. He has vast knowledge how to develop a cricket in associate setups. Uh, so, we will talk to him and try to find out his knowledge and share with you everyone. Uh, so, Pobudu. So, you debuted uh, internationally in uh, 1993 when you were 19 years old, right? Yeah. And uh, then you went on to play for Sri Lanka as a test match player and then later on ODI. Tell us something about your experience of that time. Um, it is a long journey, um, long time back. Um, um, I was like, you know, I started my career as a cricketer when I was 9 years old. Mm -hmm. um, played, I mean, played for a school called DSN Nyker mm -hmm. College, and um, from there, um, my when I was 15 years, I, my only dream was to play for the country. So, I worked really hard to get there. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I may be not the most talented player at that time, but um, but I didn't give up until I get I I, I get there. So, uh, the same time with uh, Ramesh Kalvitharan, uh, he he kept ODIs, and I was keeping the Test, game, test matches, mm. um, yeah, and, uh, and like three years that I was with the national team, um, I really enjoyed and, and great experience. Um, even before and after playing for Sri Lanka, like you know, I, I was uh, going with, on with my first class career. Mm -hmm. uh, in in two th year two thousand, uh, I retired from first class cricket in Sri Lanka and came to Canada thinking that uh, no more cricket. <laughs> oh. But um, yeah, um, once a cricketer, always a cricketer. Always a cricketer, and uh, I, I then came, uh, after I came to uh, Canada, I played for Centurions Club and okay. five years. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how I got into Canada, the Canadian cricketers. system. So b before we talk about your journey in Canada, let's go back to Sri Lanka and talk about that. For your your international career was very short lived, like just for one year, but. Within that one year, you were the first choice of as a wicketkeeper and batsman. So, what happened? That why it was short-lived. Do you have any regrets about when you look back at uh, those, those period? Not really. I mean, uh, like I actually played for three years. I mean, three years, th yeah. those days that uh, we we play very less test cricket mm -hmm. per year, mm -hmm. and um, uh, so I was actually leading we had ke wicketkeeper for test cricket, and 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 uh, in '95. Um, and then in '96, when we won the World Cup, mm -hmm. I was also in the in the, in the, squad. the main main squad. Mm -hmm. um, so the Karvitar and Rumish Karvitar came out of like a, as a, like a top batter and mm -hmm. a decent keeper, mm -hmm. and uh, and and the selectors decided like you know for him to keep both versions. Both versions. Um, both versions. But I was in the system for for a few years. Uh, couldn't get get back to the team again, um, but uh, got opportunity to play A teams and. Development uh, tours uh, with the Sri Lanka team, um, yeah, and then I cannot yeah. continue with the first class cricket. So in uh, 1996, I remember Ramesh and uh, Sanaj Jashuria actually changed the style of ODI opening 
right? He they wrote a history, and afterward we see that the ODI was never the same uh, as it was before uh, 1996. So. Was there any particular plan within going in the team that this is how the role were given to these two players and they were performing according to the roles? Um, uh, it was a kind of a, a, a big gamble that uh, Arjun Rantunga and, and uh, Dave Watmore, the coach at, at that time, took. Mm -hmm. um, some Sanat and Kalutana both were batting uh, late in the order, and that time Sanat also Sanat, Sanat and I played together basically, and he was basically struggling to stay in the team, he, even though he is a talented uh, batter, yeah. uh, he was able to keep his place from a bit of his left arm spin. Mm. Um, and uh, one tour in 1993 uh, or 1994 uh, in South Africa, Mendela Trophy, mm -hmm. um, our middle order was like decently packed with Asanga Guru Singer, Aravind Arjuna, yeah, yeah. Prashan Mahanam yeah. and Hashan Tilakarat. Hashan so all, only uh, place that was open was the, oh, the opening Open there, and, yeah. and uh, against New Zealand in in South Africa, uh, Arjun asked him uh, Sanat to open in, uh, in the yeah. batting, mm -hmm. and he went and got 140. Okay, uh, that's where the everything he started. He cemented his place, yeah. Uh, okay. And then um, uh, the wicket keeper Kalutaran also was batting late, so mm -hmm. with, with the long middle order that they had, uh, they they just tried. Uh, yeah, somewhere. Okay, the so top. they were confident that even they got out, middle yeah, order is deep order. enough to manage. Okay, that's right. Okay, um, but let's now come to uh, Canada. Now, in two thousand one, you said you emigrated to Canada, right? And uh, you never thought of playing it again. But you know, once a cricketer, always a cricketer. And for you, you already played for international and Test matches and ODI. So how was the when you started playing in Canada, was it a shock looking at the gap or was it like, okay, I just want to enjoy? Uh, no, I mean, uh, like, uh, firstly, I, I came to play play for Centuries and, and we, uh, the five years that I played in the, in the Toronto League, mm -hmm. uh, six years basically, and, and we won four times mm -hmm. uh, the Premier League. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I was enjoying playing mm -hmm. cricket and, and uh, but looking at the na national team, I was not that really looking to pay, play for Canada, but uh, that time John Davidson, Ian Billcliffe, uh, there was a good team. Good team. Um, and uh, they were, and I first time I watched when the 2001 World Cup qualifier happened in Toronto mm -hmm. and uh, I think Canada finished on, around the third, I think, and, mm -hmm. and got qualified it for was, 2003 It was intercontinental. Cup you are talking about? No. no I, okay. In 2001, there was a World Cup qualifier. Okay, yeah. With, yeah. Uh, if I am not mistaken, about 12 to 14 teams were here. Okay. Uh, and played and Canada got through in that qualifier and, and that is how they qualified for the 2003 World Cup. Okay. Um, and, and, and from there… Uh, picked up. Picked it up and and uh, when 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 I was qualified, which is mm. 2005, mm -hmm. and and they, that year same year there was a qualifier uh, uh, for the 2007 World Cup. Yes. So I played. I that's that's my first tour uh, with, with Canada. Okay. I think Pobudu is trying to say that in 2001 he emigrated, but he was not qualified to play for Canada. It took it took him four four years to qualify. So. Between, between that period, he was playing domestically and then he was selected for Canada. Sure. Great. Uh, but after that, 2006 or 2007, you retired. And then in e immediately, you took over as a coach of Canada. So, did you ever try coaching before or you know about coaching, coaching before you become the coach of Canada? Uh, I, was, I was part of the na National Academy, in Sri Lankan Academy okay. before I came. Sure. And I was coaching uh, one of the uh, top schools in Sri Lanka as well. Okay. So I was into into coaching. Um, so you knew about coaching. So. Yeah. yeah. But you never knew that you will be become one successful one unless you started doing it, right? You took yeah. it as a challenge, and then you started. Yeah, I working mean, on it. Um, one of the uh, the strengths that I had, uh, even my playing days, like you know, um, more than the runs and and or, or the catches, I I am um, like you know. Uh, I, I was able to read the game very well mm -hmm. and uh, and tactical side was pretty good with me so i, I think the, the you know the coaching okay. uh, from that uh, it helped me to mm -hmm. become a good coach okay so let's fast forward some of the thing because i want to come to canada in the last 
But let's start your journey in Nepal. So you resigned in 2011 in uh, Canada from Canada, and then you took up the another one in Nepal. So tell me something about Nepal because you are coined as a person who can take any associate country and catapult them into a bigger league. What is that mantra? And um, how was it dealing with the Nepalese uh, board and the people out there? Uh, it's all about like, you know, when, when you look at a team and, and you have to see what, what, what they need to be, you know, to, to improve mm -hmm. or, or which, which path for them to take to, to be, to uh, be out, out there and, and, and become a top associate country. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, so I, I was I, actually, I, to be honest, like I was very fortunate to coach uh, Nepal because uh, the, the players are so good and they, they are very talented and they are very dedicated. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I always take the challenge that uh, when, you, when you have a group of people like that, mm -hmm. it's, if, I, if I don't do well, it's, it's my mistake because mm -hmm. They are doing what, what you are asking for, to do. Mm -hmm. so, um, and so, when you joined Nepal, uh, you sat with the board people and you said that this is my objective and goal and this is the way I want to move forward and they give you the full liberty for that? Uh, how that happened was like, you know, during the 2011 World Cup, uh, uh, with, when I was with the Canadian team, mm -hmm. I, I got an email from the president of the, 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 the Nepal mm -hmm. board and, um, and they gave me a six months. Uh, uh, period. period, yeah, okay. and and uh, was ne never planned to stay for that long. Mm. Uh, I mean, for, for four years. But mm. uh, uh, in that six months, there was a T20 call World Cup qualifier. So, mm. if I, if they get through, mm. they said they're going to uh, think of uh, you know further, uh, further. Mm. So we got through, and 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 then we went to uh, like uh, the the main qualifier. Mm. They, we got through the the. The, the Asia qualifier, with which they have never done done it before. Mm. Uh, so then they went, went to the main qualifier and uh, uh, it was a new experience and, and, and they were not basically a good T20 team, they were good 50 over cricketers. Mm. Uh, but um, uh, they just finished uh, in that main qualifier, they finished on the seventh position. Mm. Um, but the team was progressing pretty well. So they yeah. after that, they gave me another two years. Uh, so tell me, Quickly, like two, three challenge you faced in Nepal and how you overcome that challenge. And then we'll move forward to US. So, tell me about Nepal challenge. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, when I look at it, Nepal, the amount of talent that they have, uh, it's immense. Like uh, everybody, every young kid wants to play cricket yeah. and they're talented. It's talented. just like part of India. Or, yeah, it's you know, part of it's, India. Um, so, there was no no short of talent, and and I just had to put uh, like you know everything together, uh, mm -hmm. and 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 I just had to mention want to mention that they they had a great captain. That's mm -hmm. also one of the things that went easy with me because I just had to you know set up things, and and the captain was good enough to good enough to take manage. on. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, when I when I went there, they were in Division Four. Mm -hmm. And uh, able to go through all these and and, and become a ODI country and and um, in 2013 uh, we got through the main World Cup qualifier, finished third to to be in the World yeah, Cup. Yeah. Um, so it, it just like I, I put fire into that country and and then after that uh, you know the, the the whole country was was aware of the game and whole country was following. And so you were one famous guy after that, right? So why did you leave uh, Nepal? What happened? Was there any controversy and um, problem started? The the, uh, the the players and the and the and the board had few disagreements. Mm. So I I was a bit of in the middle of that, uh, which I didn't get involved. But uh, 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 but the, but but that those issues didn't go well, and and then later on, I, ICC came and uh, suspended uh, their the the. Nepal board as well. Mm. So um, uh, even after that, I was I, I was with them, and then and then once the board was suspended, the Nepal government hired me and asked me to stay for another two years. Two years, okay. Um, and I I feel I feel that like you know I still I I couldn't finish my job mm. with Nepal because I thought that uh, they had the full uh, capacity to become a full member country because mm. of the the you know talent, the interest yeah. and the talent that they have. Uh, but we, they are in the ODI uh, setup right now, and mm. 
they just had to organize their uh, the, the domestic structure and they can so how different is their domestic structure from canada is their structure is better than canada in terms of quality and the competition the the uh, um, if you ask me about Nepal, I mean, and Canada, if I had to compare, basically, there's not not much of different because um, there's no not enough tournaments. But Nepal has the opportunity to do it because Nepal, twelve months, I mean, out of twelve they months, they cricket. can ten, ten at least ten months they can play cricket. Play cricket. And everybody wants to play. They have time. I yeah. mean, national team is available to it's, train from. It's like religion for them. Yeah. So, yeah. They, it's easy to do things there. Yeah. Then Canada. Yeah. We'll come to the Canadian challenge later on, but with this we'll take a break and then we'll come after the break. See you after the break. Pandit Vijayaram, a famous astrologer and psychic healer. Palm reading, face reading, horoscope. Pandit Vijayaram ka kehna hai, inke paas aapki tamam samasyaon ka hal hai. Kale jadu ka tord, aapka mehboob aapke kadmo mein. Aapki marriage, job, karobar, bimari aur court ko chari samet tamam samasyaon ka hal. Tamam dharmo ke bhen bhaiyo ke mishkilat dur kar sakte hai. All religions welcome. Pandit Vijayaram se raapta ki jiye 647-391-2133, 647-391-2133, address 5330 Young Street, North York, Toronto. Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to State Bad with Devesh. As you know, we were talking about, before we slip into the break, we are talking about uh, we are talking with uh, Pubudu, uh, the great uh, international player and coach. Um, and we are talking about his journey from Sri Lanka to Canada and to Nepal. And uh, we were sharing the experience he had and challenges he had in uh, Nepal. So, Pubudu, uh, now let's talk about because you resigned from there and then you got an opportunity in the US. And before you go to US, uh, a lot of el people you know, allege that Pubudu runs after money. Is it true? And Is that the reason you left Nepal and joined US because there were better money or something no, else? No, I, I think ne Nepal paid me the, the highest, I would say, the because oh. I was I had uh, from the government. Mm -hmm. uh, it's never been that. It's, it's never, never, money. never been the money. It's just uh, uh, my passion is to get these countries into the top level. Thanks for clarifying that because I want to clarify a few things because people are making rumors and I do not want anything to come between Canada and Pupudu. Okay, so let's talk about US because you joined US in 2017? 16, 16 yeah. and 17. Yeah. And that time Canada, US was also going through a transition period. In 2017, ICC intervened and scrapped the board and they created a new board. So how was like this challenge? like? In the middle of, you were in the middle of something which is like you don't know whom to talk, how to talk and what to do. So, how you manage in this storm period? No, actually uh, I, I was hired by the ICC for mm. US. Okay. Uh, because uh, just before I came, um, ICC suspended the, the USA cricket board mm -hmm. and they put a kind of interim uh, board, there. board with the USA, mm -hmm. uh, I mean with the USA officials plus some ICC uh, officials and and they hired me because they, they want uh, the national team to progress uh, mm. uh, like just because that the board is not functioning they don't want uh, so you, cricket to be I, stopped. So if I'm not wrong, sorry, uh, you are not, if I'm not wrong you are directly um, dealing with uh, Ricardo Powell and uh, Kiran Powell. Uh, Ricardo was uh, um, the selection board member, right? So, uh, Ricardo was right. uh, the chairman of the, the selection. selection panel, okay. and uh, and uh, there was a couple of uh, ICC uh, officials were there. That's all. That's was all. There, yeah. 
So, it was easier to deal with them rather than the, the whole uh, domestic cricket. Structure. Yeah, it's, it was, uh, I mean, I was uh, basically directly in, in charge of the national team mm -hmm. and uh, I, I didn't have to do too much on, on the domestic side. Uh, and it was pretty easy because when I gave my plan for the for the next two two and a half years, it, it, everything was given to me uh, because you know they understood my the whole plan requirements. So yeah, they understood. And my my job was to get them from Dushan Four to ODI. So, so you think it. that uh, it is easy to deal with the people who understand the basic of cricket, rather than the people who doesn't understand anything about cricket. In associate cricket, I would say you need that trust to go move forward because move forward. Uh, there's there are so much of gambles that you need to take is nothing is clear in on, on the pathway mm. i'll give you a couple of examples one is like selections mm. if, you, if you talk about selections um, there is no proper domestic cricket structure in any of the associate countries to say okay this guy plays scoring runs and we need to get him because we don't know what type of league level they are playing, mm. um, and 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 even if you uh, if you get the the best league, mm -hmm. uh, uh, there there's a big gap between the international cricket and 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 this league league cricket. So mm. you have to see a player and say, okay, you know this player can perform in the next level. Mm. You ha you have to take that gamble, and and people are, uh, on top of you need to trust you. Mm. That it's not a favor. It's it's, a, it's a, that you you are basically picking up the uh, the right player and. So, your, your models of Prandi and you want to say that in associate country where there is not a proper structure, uh, there should be structure put should be uh, laid down or if it is not there then let the coach handle it with a trust. So, the, the leadership should come and say, okay, Pubudu, I am assigning you a job, uh, can you handle it and give me a result, that is what you are talking with a full trust. Yeah, I mean everywhere that I performed, the the the, the board or the the main officials were, were trusting my my uh, credentials. Cre credentials and mm. and and, uh, uh, and and I was giving results, so mm. they were keep backing me up for mm. my decision take mm. making. So mm. you need to have that, uh, especially in, in in associate cricket. Uh, and you know, if, I mean, for the other side of that is like full members, you have a a first class cricket Proper and structure. you know who is coming next when yeah. somebody is getting dropped you know who's are, who are the yeah. next players. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah. in associate cricket is not clear. So, you want to say that in uh, associate environment like Canada, US, uh, the national coach should also uh, work with a uh, selection board all the time around the year and find out what are the best talents available. Yeah, I, I think it is one of the, the key to, to like you know for especially places like USA and, and Canada, hmm. um, yeah, the coach has to get involved in the in the, in in the, the whole process. Yeah. Uh, it's not that like you know he may be the not it doesn't need, need to be the only decision maker. You have hmm. to have a selection panel and yeah, yeah. and and you always uh, discuss properly and hmm. and make the final decision. Yeah. But then coach has to get involved and coach has to plan. Like uh, if I had to uh, talk about a big like you know bigger things that. A bigger picture. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's it sometimes like uh, um, you know you you uh, uh, have to give a plan where like some to some to some tours where the the tours are not important to go higher rank in the in the ICC ranking. You need to gamble a bit with a few players to see how they come out. Mm -hmm. So it's all about like you know make sure that you have your team is ready for every ICC event. So, basically you are saying trial and error, yeah. but your best of your cricketing knowledge you will try your best to bring a good people, That's right. but it may backfire some time and that the board should have a trust on you to handle that backfire. That's right and, That's and, and for me I I am happy to say that my uh, the gambles that I have taken are 80 percent plus worked. Uh, it so, has yeah. worked. Yeah. Because we are dealing with a human and human is not a science all the time, human yeah. behavior is sometimes unpredictable. So, I understand what you are saying and uh, I hope the board members understand that and make their mind to give you that liberty because we do not have a proper structure in Canada and as you know better than me because you have played here at the highest level. So, let us come up to Canada, uh, before we come to Canada, I also, this is my personal question also because I was watching Namibia tournament and I have seen that 
Canada has better raw talent than mm -hmm. U.S. everywhere because yeah. U.S. may have better facility now, uh, infrastructure now, but when it comes to a raw talent and better talent, I think Canada has upper hand and Canada always beat U.S. Yeah. recently. Yeah. Uh, but in Namibia, Canada was winning and they won, but it was always said that there was instruction from coach that kick Canada out of the tournament. So, was there any instruction from you to just play for that 4-5 over just to play Canada out rather than going for the full target? Is it true? No, no that's, uh, I am glad that you asked that, uh, this question and uh, I, I normally never do those kind of things. But what I, my, my job is to, as a coach, to give all the information to, to my team, where, 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 whatever the team that I am coaching, mm -hmm. um, uh, whether it's like the net run rate, like or net run rate, or or all the details and yeah. what's happening in the uh, the other games. Uh, so at lunchtime, I know what happened in the uh, other two games and what's going to happen, mm. and uh, the, all the calculations were, were given. Were well, happening, yeah. okay. And um, and uh, after that, I I I, I have not. I don't. I, 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 that's why I'm, I'm a bit surprised that. Uh, that I, I also heard few from few, few people about this, and I have never given any instruction to, to, to get Canada out. And, and I would say that the Canada and if I, Canada and USA both had ODI uh, status, it would have been uh, very good for the, yeah. the for the region. Yeah. Uh, but I uh, for, uh, coming back to that, I I I, I see all, all these things in a different in an angle, like where uh, even. Like you said, even if Canada has to play today, whether it's Nepal or whether it's USA, I still think Canada is a better team than and those two countries yeah. um, as a as a national team. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to these main tournaments, mm -hmm. it's not about your the best team or, or your best eleven or what what you have on the paper. Mm -hmm. It's about how you play from first ball on that tournament to the last ball of that last tournament. Ball. If you cannot finish the tournament, yeah, it, it's it's not yeah. only about winning. Also, it's yeah. not, it's about like you know how you. Uh, uh, play uh, even how you lose, like mm. uh, when when uh, when USA played the first game against Oman in that tournament, Namibia. Yeah. USA got all out for one forty nine. Yes. Yes. And and uh, and USA pressed them to keep them like they only got that one hundred forty nine on the fiftieth over. We we didn't allow uh, Oman to have a better a big net run rate, or, mm. or we didn't allow for for USA to go low in the net run rate. Uh, and I feel that, like you know, when it comes to these questions, I asked few few people. Like uh, they were, they were, they were. Some of the people were um, accusing me that, like you know, we were. I was trying to put Canada down in that tournament. But when 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 uh, when uh, Canada plays Oman, Oman got 288, and Canada got all out to 160, leaving 10, 15 overs. Like. When we, when even you know that you can't get 288, but you have to bat through and get that 200, 220, the full overs. Yeah. Uh, many games went like that. So it's it's not all about like you know one no, game. No. Yeah, or yeah. No, no. It's I, all about. I totally agree with you. Uh, yeah. It was our own poor planning, and I don't know. As a coach, you might have noticed that we have almost a new coach, parachuted from India, who doesn't know even the full team and the associate team, how he's going to do the planning. So I don't know how these guys do the planning, but I leave it that way. That way, And uh, I want to add, yes, it was our own fault that we cannot qualify. Uh, but there was a controversy, that's why I asked you a question. Yeah, and I'm glad that you clarify that that was not the reason. But being as a coach, your job is always to calculate everything, you know, on pro rata basis and find out if we are going to lose or what. So that's fine. So yeah, and just to add, add, add to that a bit, like uh, e even when I was coaching Nepal, and uh, Nepal has to play a few times Canada, mm -hmm. and and uh, Canada actually beat Nepal at the beginning, and and one division two, which is before the this, uh, the first division two in Namibia, mm -hmm. uh, Nepal came and 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 beat uh, Canada. That's the first time that yeah. Nepal beat, beat Canada, Canada. Um, but. Even for today, I would say, like you know, Canada is a is, is a better team. team. But if if you want, like you know, to to be uh, top in the in, um, or, or, or get into uh, ODI level in or associate, 
uh, it, uh, like I s said earlier, like you know, it's not about the best team. It's about how you need to know how you play those tournaments. Tournaments. And and Canada and USA, uh, Nepal and USA being a, a team, both teams are behind Canada, but they are at the at the, uh, at the moment they they are in front yeah. in ranking. Yeah. So because I think they know better how to play the big tournaments. Exactly. Like in Dubai, if you notice, the Canada was doing pretty well, and there were all chance to qualify for for the tournament for T20, yeah. but all of a sudden there was a slump and we gone. So let's talk about why did you leave Canada in 2011? Was there a controversy? I heard that there was a fight with uh, Ranjit Sani because Ranjit Sani wanted to have his own way, whereas your personality is to work independent, right? And I agree with that. So was that the reason? Um, Tell it in the camera and to the people because people are, some people say something, some people say something because Pubudu need money, that's why he went, he deserted Canada. But what is the real story behind Canada, you leaving Canada? Um, I, I'm glad to explain that. Uh, mm. uh, like uh, in, in 2007, I, I took over mm. uh, Canada and, and uh, in 2007 World Cup, which happened in West Indies, mm -hmm. we had a, a, a t national team went to World Cup uh, averaging about 34, 35 age. Mm. So, uh, as soon as I, t I took over after the World Cup, 80% uh, of the players retired because they all New. want to play for the World Cup and then retire from there and then I had to build a team from scratch, scratch to, yeah. Yeah. to the 2009 World Cup qualifier. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that time President of uh, Cricket Canada just told me like, you know, I'm giving you, giving you the full support and mm -hmm. I just want to qualify for the World Cup and, and gain a And remain. he was Ben Senek. Ben Senek. Okay. Uh, and he, he told me like we to have to get ODI work. status somehow mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. and and you, you'll have the free, free hand to to do the job. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, focus and get the job done. And he never intervened? Never intervened. Okay, great. Um, so at the same time we had a CEO also, first CEO I think, uh, uh, yeah. Kanda. Yeah. Uh, so things were going well, and and we we build up uh, somehow into that 2009 um, uh, World Cup, and and we got through, and we finished second in that in that tournament to Ireland, and mm. we were runner up. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a great achievement. Um, I mean, being uh, the uh, Scotland, ne Netherlands, and all top teams, we mm. we were able to come o over them. Uh, and, and then my plan was a bit different. Now, when when you see. Uh, uh, for associate country, the World Cup is not the main one. We, we are not going to a World Cup to win a World Cup. We know that. Yeah. It's about gaining experience gaining and experience. doing your best. Doing best. So I felt that in 2007 we didn't gain anything for the country because we we sent the older group older people, okay. and then there was nothing to continue from there yeah. except for one or two players. Um, so from there onwards, like uh, after qualifying 2009. That's where these all the young players we 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 brought into the team uh -huh. to co focus into 2013 qualifier. Hmm. So we had we we took a, a team to the World Cup actually, with uh, averaging 24 mm -hmm. uh, age, mm. and and we had five under 19s. That's mm. where Nitesh Kumar came in, Ruvind Gunasekar, Hiral Patel, uh, Pad Desai, mm -hmm. uh, and and then a few other guys who couldn't make it, but they were around like Hamza. Hamza also, was, yeah. Tariq also was in the team, yeah. and uh, Limbada, uh, mm -hmm. some good players. Mm -hmm. They were just under 19 and played the World Cup uh, in New Zealand under 19 World Cup. Okay. So we brought them into the system, and thinking that the like by the 2013, now we have the ODI status, and 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 for them to at least play 25, 30 ODIs by the 2013 qualifier. Mm -hmm. That was my my plan, and I I want. Like all these years, like you know, two, in, the, in that 2001 to 2010 time period, the, uh, most of the tournaments were won because of John Davidson or Ian Biltcliffe Bil Bil from New Zealand. Hmm. But uh, I, I was actually thinking that we have to make in our house, team grassroots, grassroots teams, and and, yeah. and they, we had the talent. Yeah. And uh, Ashish Bagai was the captain. He was yeah. a great ca captain and yeah. very consistent batter. Very consistent. Man. Um, uh, very decent team, with, and then so we got these five youngsters into the system. Um, but then um, in the World Cup, uh, uh, we, like like you said, we had few disagreements, and 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 I, I thought like you know it's not going to work. Uh, mm. 
And what was that disagreement if you can disclose um, about selection? No, it was not selections. Uh, it, it was uh, that uh, we we were uh, we were uh, we were supposed to play the uh, Australia last game, mm -hmm. uh, first round last game uh, in in Bangalore, mm -hmm. and um, uh, there's some program was going on, um, and uh, just before the match, some some there was a program in the night. Mm. Uh, and I, I, I don't want players to go in, in, into the, that program since there's a game next day. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I don't want. And to who was go. insisting to go to that program? Uh, Somebody from Canada on the phone. Uh, some official. I just some don't want to get, go so into details. Okay. But, uh, so yeah. some officials were insisting that team should go to that program. And what was that program in nature? It was a diplomacy, or what was that? Uh, yes, yeah, some, some dinner, and and they were expecting some sponsors to come okay. through that. Okay. Okay. So you had a disagreement and didn't went well. But did you feel proud when you went in 2011 as a coach to a country where you came from? Like it was hosted by India, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh if I'm not wrong. And how did you feel when you went to the your home country to play the first match I guess? Again? Yeah, no, that was a great feeling and and uh, yeah, the, the, the Sri Lanka started uh, um, the the tournament with with Canada, mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, e like uh, even though Canada had a very slow start in that World Cup, I think we later on we picked, we picked it up and and I saw Rizwan Chima up. making a good clean uh, sixes against uh, Murali. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was and, great to and, watch. And 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 the people, I mean, the tournament like the the. Uh, the, the other teams actually we they, they respected us how how we played and okay. and we almost beat Pakistan we had a yeah. great opportunity to beat Pakistan and even against New Zealand and Australia yeah. like people like Hiral Patel they stood up against the best bowling attacks and and scored in runs so yeah but what about this when uh, there was a controversy in Sri Lanka when you said that uh, they didn't give you enough space to prepare because the stadium was not ready for you guys. You kept waiting for two hours because Sri Lankan were uh, practicing. So, did you feel good about it because it was your home home country? No, I, I was. I, I was pretty angry on that day. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, the the ICC has given the slots uh, for for mm. uh, both teams to train, and when we went on our time, Sri Lanka team was practicing. So, we made a big fuss for that. Mm. Uh, I think that's how the world goes. Like you know, big teams are. Yeah, because my research team gave me this point, so I wanted to ask this. Uh, so let's talk about that. You clarify that money was never a criteria to leave Canada. You wanted to your, prove your point, to prove your talent. So you move forward because things were not working in Canada in yeah. Ranjit Saini's leadership. But now you are back. What do you think? Are you ready to support Canada in whatever way you can? do because today I think in Canada needs some good coach and I'll tell you why because recently Ranjit Saini came on on online interview one way interview and said that we do not have much money to spend on coaches full time so what do you think that where the money should also be there and I suggest always suggest that there should be some incentive for a coach you cannot spend million dollar two million dollar but at least forty forty three thousand a year a coach to work on because coach works full time. What is your suggestion and any any yeah, uh, indication uh, that you want to do something for Canada? No, I'm 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 firstly I, I'm I'm glad to help Canada anytime and I I really want to see Canada being you know in uh, as a as a top uh, associate nation. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, just to give you a bigger picture on that is like um, uh, now the the current ICC structure is in a such a way that. Um, the, the the teams that who, who are not in the ODI status, mm. uh, it's it's tough for them to get into the to to back into the ODIs. Why? Because uh, the three or four tournaments, like you know, uh, only that we have to play in the next two two and a half years. Yeah. And once you get into that that again, like you know, we, which we had in Namibia, the Division Two, that one tournament you had to play play well and. And and get into that top four mm. to to back, go back to the ODI status. Mm. So the all the ODI nations, seven seven countries who in that second league, 
they are playing three, three, every three months they are playing a series. Hmm. Uh, in between, they, they can play bilateral tournaments. Hmm. Uh, so basically, uh, if you take USA, USA is going to play by, by 2022, hmm. USA going to play 55 ODIs from now to 22. Hmm. And, and, so uh, they're gaining more experience. They, they, are, they are basically they are, they, are, they, are, they are maintaining the team. They are they, uh, like all these seven countries, and mm. and for us to get into that next round, we need to get one or two teams out from there, right? Mm. So for us to be in the oh, standard, yeah. even though we don't have much of much cricket, mm. we have to maintain our national team playing bilateral tournaments, at least focusing T20 tournaments. Okay, so how? What what is? If I make you a, a president of cricket, what should be your uh, game plan? Roadmap. If, uh, the, uh, number one is that we need to get into the ODI status back again, and yeah. and that is going to the the next opening is going to come in in the, in the uh, 2022, mm -hmm. and uh, and we have to build our okay. national team from now on, not that three months, four months before that tournament. Yeah. It's never yeah. going to happen. It's never going. To. That's yeah. what we do, and I'll tell you that we are just having one tour this year, which is Malaysia, and practice has started is going to start tomorrow, right, we, when we speak. Today is like Friday and Saturday they are starting, 11th of January they are starting a practice. Now hear it out, April you have a tournament, you are asking all the players to come and start mm, preparing for that tournament. You have never speak about that tournament before that and now you are starting your planning right now, three months before and it happens every day. Last year also for Namibia they started in February, March they sent all of a sudden, they said that, okay, go to Sri Lanka. So, there were no planning and the coach were parachuted for two months. Yeah. Why you paid 30, 40,000, 50,000 to a coach just for one month? Yeah, and, and like uh, just to uh, uh, like, you know, support what you are saying, like uh, uh, when I was in with ne Nepal and, and, and then again, then with the USA, mm -hmm. it took me just good two years to build, build, build that team, team from. It takes from, some time. Yeah. So it, I think, like you know, for an associate country, one of the most important positions are head coach because you, whether what you whatever you pay or whatever, like you have to have a permanent coach. Coach, whoever you whatever, for 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 him to plan, plan. like for that two years, how are you going to uh, get into that tournament? Yeah. Um, but you know, since you left in 2011, we have 16 coaches. So, do you think that there will be a stability in the uh, thinking or development? I wonder why. So, <laughs> let's talk about Malaysia is just a one tournament this year. What do you would suggest to the player to keep them motivated for the whole year? Because we do not have any financial contract, although it was promised last year that 18 players will be given a contract. I don't know whether money came from uh, GT20 or not. But Cricket Canada had 1 million surplus this year. This is the first time when we have a surplus because of GT20 money. But it's still we do not give a contract to the player because we do not have proper structure to keep them engaged. So first of all, my priority should be that I put a structure in place and give a contract to the player to keep them motivated. What is your thought on it? No, I, I think like, you know, I mean, as, as players like, uh, uh, end of the day, like you know, you you uh, as, as players, you had you had to feel for the country, and you had to find ways to fight, battle out, like you know, all these uh, uh, issues, like you know, for for you to perform and, and the team to perform, um, and and I think like there's a good bunch of players for Canada, and and I I I think they can be easily can be one of the top two three teams like in the in associate. Rank, associate world, yeah, and if you if you see right now the Scotland. USA is up there, and mm. and uh, UAE, uh, Canada is is up there with them. They, they, so there's no you know, uh, uh, short of ta any talent. Yeah. So if I say that, uh, and you know, Mr. Ranjit Saini uh, put this on paper on online interview and said that they are going to certify the club here. So I don't know how. What will be the criteria to certify a club? But do you think this idea will work? Um, I didn't get you. Well. Like, what, so what do you mean what, by certifying? What Mr. President is saying that he is going to set up a standard. Oh, okay. And he will s then the cricket board will certify particular clubs that these are certified by Cricket Canada. So anybody is free to go and give their fees and whatever. 
but cricket canada certified clubs or okay. academy so do you think this is a good idea and it will work i i, I think like you know um, more than anything i i think uh, canada need 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 a uh, a provincial tournament mm -hmm. proper provincial yeah. tournament happens in like yes. you know ev uh, ev like one slot in every year mm. uh, so that every province can um, prepare for that mm. so that we uh, selectors and coaches can see the talent throughout the country to other country and 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 then we, we need to have a high performance program for the our elite players mm -hmm. throughout the year not just not, when, when not there's a tournament yeah, yeah. and 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 then like the the management needs to focus on from the the players going into other other premier leagues uh, domestic cricket mm -hmm. because we don't have much cricket here during especially during the winter yeah and we have to keep uh, all our top players engaged, engaged. in playing uh, top cricket somewhere top cricket somewhere yeah um so that that plan has to happen i mean so i think that not only we have should have a extensive tournament during our summer time we should be at a inter provincial level like we have a ranji trophy and other yeah. tournaments in sri lanka and pakistan not only that beside that after october when the winter set in you should have some structure for the players to keep them engaged and motivated yeah. send it to them to west indies or some other country yeah. for some tournament yeah uh, and that's lacking right so doesn't matter how much you certify the academy if you do not have proper tournament structure you cannot build a player yeah right. I mean, uh, currently I, i i feel that the mo most of these players are doing on their own stuff so yeah. i i think we we i mean if you if you are looking to be successful in the next level the the our, our management or the cricket canada needs to make sure that we take care of those top players properly top uh, like at least 20 25 cricketers and make sure that they are engaged in in playing high high level cricket they they are fit they are doing their fitness properly they they are mentally fit they uh, everything to the full program so hang on there and look at the camera and tell if i know my program is watched by every official i can guarantee you that they are they look at minutely so tell them looking at the camera and say that if they call you and say can you take up this program and help them are you available no i'm 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 like i said to you earlier like i'm i'm happy to come and help cricket canada and, and i i really like to see canada doing well in the in the in the, in the top level yeah. okay. and i strongly believe it's not about anything i strongly believe that canada has the best talent uh, among associate countries so uh it's sad to see uh, that we are not Slipping, up there yeah. uh and i'm here now and i'm i'm happy to uh, assist so if, if anyone really needs any help I, i'm you are I'm available here. okay so pobodu is available please contact him and if you do not have vision talk to right people we have a very um, informal section which i call as a rapid fire and it is kind that you have all the liberty to say yes no and say no comment but it is a uh, format of my program so i have to ask it but before that i go get into this tell me that how painful it was since 2011 you left canada to see canada slipping down and slipping down all the ranking no i'm like uh, i am i'm a canadian now like 15 18 years now 15 16 years now and I, it's very hard like you know for to me see. to see canada is going down and 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 the trend that we had 10 15 years ago and we have gone down a lot and uh, i i i will not blame the players i think yeah. that they are working very hard uh, but it's it's very painful uh, to see where canada is standing at the moment let's talk about rapid fire first question do you think you need to change your attitude and become more accommodating because all the three places you left it was like i need freedom to work do you think you need to accommodate change that uh, not not really i mean uh, people who associated with me knows like you know who are, how how i uh, work and i'm not sometimes some people can think that i'm a bit arrogant but i i when when somebody speak to me they'll know i'm not okay. and uh, i'm very flexible of doing things but one thing is that uh, i'm very Uh, result oriented and and I, if i am working i'm not working for money i need results so that's how uh, the, sometimes the 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 disconnection fair has enough, happened fair enough fair yeah. enough so do you think ranjit sani has a cricketing knowledge fair um, yes no 
I, I, I do not know actually. Okay, you do not know whether he has knowledge or not. Is Ranjit Sen your friend or ever can be your friend? Anybody can be friend with me. <laughs> so, you say yes, it is, there is a possibility. Okay. Are you friend with Kiran More? Uh, um, there, there is no uh, enemies Similar. for me, but uh, I, I was a bit disappointed how things went in uh, US. between me and him. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, you are no friend? I have, no, I, I, have, I, I have no uh, 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 anything for him. Like, you know, just, okay. yeah, I, okay. know, yeah. I know you are a fearless guy. When you played international, you were a fearless batsman and wicket keeper. Do you ever fear anybody apart from your wife? <laughs> I, I do not think so. Yeah, okay. not. <laughs> so, uh, Pupu the only fear is wife. <laughs> Best ever wicket keeper for you. You are yourself were a wicket keeper, but if you have to choose one name, whom you will choose? I, I, I feel uh, Kumar Sangakara. Kumar Sangakara. Best ever. Yes. No doubt about it. Elegant batsman and the best wicket keeper. Uh, well, the reason that I am saying he is he's one of the best because uh, he was very average when he started yeah. and kept improving every day until the, the day that he leaves, he was improving and you know. He Did he ever come to you for? Yeah, tips? We, we were kind of parallel. He is junior to me, but um, we, we have worked together. We, we worked together. With this, uh, uh, Pubudu, I would really like to thank you to come and give me time. Uh, it was really enriching this interview. And I have learned a lot from you within this half an hour and 30 minutes, 40 minutes I spent with you. And I look forward to have more interviews with you. So, with this, uh, the interview come to end. Uh, see you in next episode with a different guest with a different topic. Thank you. This might be out. Taken comfortably. That's a good catch in the deep. One run needed. This might run away to the boundary.